Hey, it's Paul with Mountain Man Chronicles. Today we're out doing some solo exploring, just checking out the trails, seeing what's out here. And I thought I'd take a moment to talk about trail communications and the equipment I use. Now having the proper trail communications you can either make or break a trip. Hopefully, using some of the equipment that I'm gonna to share today, you'll learn how to both save a marriage and make your trip more enjoyable. If something happens, what are you gonna do? Hope you enjoy the video. Remember to like and subscribe. Welcome to the Mount Man Chronicles, where the spirit of adventure comes alive. I'm thrilled to have you join our journey into the great outdoors. I'm Paul Piazza. I'm your guide through the wilderness and the storyteller behind the Mount Man Chronicles. I hope you share in our love and appreciation of what this great world has to offer. Here we live in three simple principles. Live, learn, and explore. Live, immerse yourself in the thrill of the moment, whether it be overlanding, exploring unique ghost towns, or simply enjoying the serenity of nature. We believe in living life to its fullest. Learn, cultivate that childlike curiosity. Every adventure is an opportunity to learn and discover something new. From overlanding trips to mastering trail navigation, we're a constant journey of learning and growing. Explore. Be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Venture into the unknown. Our chronicles are a testament to the places we've been and the stories waiting to be untold. Join us as we explore the hidden trails to the pristine lakes and the mysterious places this great nation has to offer. And of course, what adventure would be successful without proper planning in the right gear? We'll be showcasing some of the tools of the trade along our journeys. I truly hope you enjoy our chronicles and the journey that my wife and I travel through during our overlanding adventures. Thanks for watching. One of the biggest pieces of tech stack that's made a difference for us while we're out exploring is the WeBoost. It's allowing us to communicate, have cell signal for her so she can download videos and stuff like that while we're out exploring. Um, and it just extends the cell signal. Now, Weboost isn't going to replace a non-existent cell signal, but it will take a cell signal and amplify it and make it come through clearer. I'm going to show you here a sample here in a moment with using a, an app that is basically a cell signal. It measures your cell signal coming into your phone and show you the difference that it makes. And this is, we're not very remote. I'm still getting relatively good signal, but you'll see that it does boost it. So that what we're staring at here is a signal meter. Basically, it's an app for your cell phone telling you how well your cell phone is getting communication. Um, I have the WeBoost off right now, and it's at 99 decibels. You'll see when we turn it on, it's going to go strongly into the green. As it increases, it's gone to 96. In a moment, it should jump again. There we go, 92. Like I said, it, that's enough to make a difference between no signal and some signal, and it's going even higher as it searches for a better signal. So WeBoost does make a difference. Um, I've been sitting for some time with the WeBoost off, and it stayed relatively flat at 99. So you'll see here, just standing still, you could see the decibel difference with the WeBoost on versus the WeBoost off. WeBoost definitely is a game changer to be able to make a call or not make a call, have uh, LTE, not have LTE, but it has made a difference and will make it. So I'm gonna turn the Wii Boost off again, and in a second you'll see the Wii Boost drop. You'll see the signal drop once again. There you go. Signal dropped as the Wii Boost shut down and powered down. The Wii Boost is just simply this little amplifier right here that I have under my seat that I keep my uh, air gauge on that has an antenna coming into it. And basically, what you do is you take that antenna, and if you ever seen these driving down the road, that's what the heck they are. It is your Wii Boost antenna. I have mine relatively high in the Jeep and absolutely love where I mounted it. I absolutely love this radio. As you can see, I've mounted it down here, um, down below. So it's out of my way. What I love the most, first of all, what I wanted my priorities on an internal radio is I wanted something that I could mount and it would look like part of the vehicle. So I wanted a radio that I could put that would be unobtrusive, look like it's part of the vehicle, A, B, um, sound good and have good uh, power so I can get out far away and have multi-band and you'll see here that uh, it does have multi-band um, and it'll track up to that also you can plug in some hammer channels that you can monitor but you can't communicate on it's a cool extra feature and by far the best feature of the KG1000G is that the remote face you can see here I have it mounted down below 
looks really well. It's unobtrusive. Looks like it's part of the vehicle. Um, it's totally out of the way, and it works really, really well. Um, I can monitor multiple bands. It also can do repeaters. So that was another thing I wanted for a radio. It's something that it could do uh, repeater channels as well. Programming this radio is super simple. Um, it's just basically a computer program going in and do it. I need to update the frequencies of this program. This radio is really feature packed. One of the other cool things about it is the microphone is everything in the microphone can be used. You don't have to come down to the screen to do everything. As you can see on the microphone itself, everything's here, right? Your backlit is here. All the buttons, the menu buttons are there. And the only thing I've seen on the microphone really to use it is basically the screen. And you know, you look down, but seldom do I change anything. The only thing I really change occasionally is the squelch. Um, and that works really well. Funny story about communications is I was out on a trip not too long ago last year and uh, we had a friend that brought a CB radio along. I don't use CB. I started out with the CB radio a long time ago, but I found more and more as I was off-road, fewer and fewer people were using CB radio, so I don't use them anymore. I've converted everything over to GRMS, and that's primarily what I use. I really like this Wilkeson radio because it allows me the flexibility to have 50 watts of power, get out accurately, communicate well, as well as... Um, be able to uh, keep it truck semi factory looking although it has some cool options with it and have a robust radio with an easy to use screen and be able to communicate on the trail so far this has worked outstanding let's talk antennas i really like this semi stealth antenna it works well i've had great be able to communicate at pretty far distances really easy and it's very effective so i have no complaints about the antenna itself and I like the way my radio works. So um, again, I wanted to keep things fairly low key and low profile. So that's one of the areas that I didn't skimp on when I did it. And I'm really happy that I haven't. As my other radio I use is the TalkPod. This is my portable handheld radio. Um, you can see here GRMS 16. This is uh, up front with me. If I get out of the Jeep and I want to talk, I use this. Um, I also use, um, so this allows me to give to my spotters, allows me to use something to communicate with, can monitor separate channels. There's a lot of traffic like on our Wheeland channel as we're going. I may ask my spotter to use like channel one and I'll just use the opposite channel on my Wolksum. So I have two channels to choose from. Allows me to chat with them without having all the chatter, but still monitor the extra channel. That's how I use extra channels. It works really well. The top pot's a great radio. It's been so far, I can't complain for a cheap two-way radio. Very inexpensive, works really well, and allows me to give my spotter something to use. Again, this radio is really feature functioned. Um, it can be programmed for ham channels. I use a separate ham radio for that, um, but I don't use ham too much on the communications because most of my people that I go out with don't use a ham radio. So I stick it strictly to GRMS and try to keep my tech stack fairly simple. Um, so for communications, I'm using the GRMS radio, both this handheld talk pod and my Wolksum Ocean KG-1000G. Let's talk inReach. So this is my Garmin inReach and something I have used a Garmin inReach for years now. Big fan of it. There's different types of inReaches. I've often, I've tried to lower my amount of tools I have in the car. So before I had a GPS. And then I also had my separate inReach device. What I love about the Tread is everything is combined into one now. And I actually really enjoy that. So the inReach is just a button here. You'll see here you can compose different types of communication. So I can do just a simple communication if I want to just type something to myself. Um, so I have some options here. So what I did to do that is I just clicked into a previous message. I can type out a full message. Or if I just want to send a quick message, I can simply do this by hitting quick tasks and see, checking in for the day, I'm doing this. So oftentimes where I go is very remote and there's no cell signal. So what I love about this is I can do my quick text, I can do my quick messages, or I can do also pre-programmed replies. So I have actually three ways to communicate. Most of all, on the side of the inReach, which I'll show you here in a moment, there's an emergency button, which I can talk to people for communications, to communicate outside my group of friends to the emergency network to get myself help right away. And I think that's really important for people as they start to uh, go out and have a way to communicate. So here's how you would do that. 
On the side of the tread, there's an SOS button, as you see here, clearly labeled SOS. We are not going to signal it, but what you do is you simply pop that open, and you have your SOS button. And what SOS does is it sends an emergency signal to Garmin. They'll, disp they'll first communicate with you if they can't get you, or even if they can, you could say, hey, listen, an emergency happened. This is what I need, and they'll start communicating with you in real time. What I absolutely love about the tread is it does it on the app. It's big. I can read it signals back and forth so think of it as text messaging with an emergency responder um, in case of emergency and then if it's really bad they, you can send in SARS you can send in different people they will to help you out to recover it if not it could be hey meet me at the trailhead they're in the jeep and we're headed out we'll take care of it. got a broken ankle or whatever it needs to be set and I can't get to a, a hospital whatever it is um, what one of the cool things I'll throw in a link below here is they publish all the well, with people's permissions, they publish all the rescues that they've done over the year. Now, there is a monthly cost for the InReach. It's an investment. Think of it as insurance. It's not bad. A um, little pricey, but I, it's not a, to me, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, you know, for an emergency, probably one of the best things you could do. The other thing I really like, as I mentioned earlier, is the ability when I'm remote, and this has really been a game changer for my wife. What, what I like about the inReach is it allows me to have the peace of mind and my wife to have a peace of mind where I could check in every day and say, hey, this is what's going on. So you can see here, uh, leave in an hour, I will call you when I get cell service. This is a message and a communication in real time from a trip that I had in January. Um, and, you know, I'm checking in, everything's okay. Uh, no cell, I'll give you okay. You can see here, okay, love you. Thanks for checking in. I'll leave in an hour, but I'll call you when I get cell service. So these are all things that I've communicated with my wife. Adds peace of mind, adds her some stability. We've done it with my sons when we go out. We say, hey, we're out in the middle of nowhere. We'll call you, just check in and see how things are going. I like that ability. It also brings my wife a peace of mind to know at the end of the night that, hey, I'm going to bed or, hey, check it in for the morning. I'm leaving in an hour and I'll call you when I get cell service. So she knows what's going on, too. Um, that's been really, really, really helpful. So that is trail communications in the Jeep and what I've done and why I love it and how it works. I hope there was some useful information into that and I hope it was helpful for you. Um, my hope is that you like and subscribe this video. You found some useful tips for yourself. Please comment. I'd love to hear what you're using for your trail communications, what type of radios you use, um, what you think of the three outline of you know, standard rig communication, external phone communication, and then emergency communication. I'd love to hear what you're using in different three categories. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.